Hi, today I want to talk about group dynamics. So when I first came into the craft, um, the only people who were talking about group dynamics were German Wiccans that I met anyway. And uh, I think it's still a neglected topic in the English speaking world. Uh, there's been some excellent writing on it from Phil Hine and I've included chapters on it in my books All Acts of Love and Pleasure, Inclusive Wicca and um, Dark Mirror, The Inner Work of Witchcraft. Um, actually, I think the chapter is in The Night Journey, Witchcraft as Transformation. Um, but anyway, check out, the, check out my books uh, because there's more information in there. So with, um, without further ado, let's talk about group dynamics. So the first thing you want to think about when you're looking at your group in terms of group dynamics is where does the power go in the group? And once you've figured that out, um, a lot of other stuff flows from that thought. So is there one person who always dominates um, the ritual or the social chit chat or whatever it happens to be? And <clears throat> also what can you do about making the, making the space more equal for all the participants. Uh, so one of the things that I do um, with our group is that we have a session at the beginning where everybody takes it in turns to share what ha what's been happening for them for the last couple of weeks since we saw each other. And that really helps because then we've all heard each other's news, we all know where, where our feelings are at um, and what people are bringing to the table. Um, and it also means that you don't have to tell the other members of the group your news more than once. Um, so, it, and it's really useful for kind of group bonding. So some groups have an elected or appointed leader and that can be okay. Um, obviously you need a mechanism for um, re-electing or reappointing your leader. Um, and... Uh, some place, some organisations don't have that. Uh, and one of the things about Wiccan covens is they tend to be formed by people who have left another coven and gone off to form a coven. So um, the, that leadership tends to stay the same. And then, you know, people, if people don't like it, they tend to vote with their feet by leaving. Um, I think we can make we can do a bit better than that. Uh, you know, you might want to have a, a high priestess who's the high priestess all the time, um, or you might rotate the role of high priestess, um, or alternatively, at least give people the chance to organise and facilitate rituals. So, the, in that sense, the ritual leadership rotates. Um, <clears throat> I mean, one of the one of the reasons why you'd want to do that is to avoid burnout on the part of the the leaders because leadership can give you burnout and that's not pleasant. So um, when you're running a group, you probably want to create something with a fairly flat hierarchy. At least that's my preference, um, because then you have shared decision making, informal communications. Um, so in Wicca in the UK, it is absolutely not the custom to address the high priestess as lady something or other. Um, if anybody tries that on me, I will laugh my socks off. Uh, so please don't do it. Um, I mean, obviously other lineages have, do differently and that is their choice. Um, definitely not my cup of tea. Uh, there's quite enough aristocracy in Britain without creating more of it, thank you. Uh, and yes, I am a small R Republican, um, abolish the monarchy, get rid of the aristocracy because they're the thing that's propping up all the class system and inequality in Britain. Anyway, ah, that was a bit of a digression, wasn't it? So um, <laughs> anyway, back to group dynamics. Um, so when a group first forms, it goes through a process that's called forming, storming, norming and conforming. Uh, actually performing. It's interesting. It's an interesting Freudian slip there. Um, so the norming and conforming are actually the same thing. Um, so the forming is obviously they come is the stage where they come together, and then the storming is where 
their ideas might be in conflict with each other or their goals might be in conflict with each other. Uh, so at some point there has to be a norming process where there's a convergence of ideas and a convergence of goals or an agreed upon set of goals. Like obviously people can go off and do their goals that aren't compatible with the rest of the group. They can do those somewhere else and then the group agrees on a consensus of the way forward for, for their goals and the style of rituals they're going to do um, and at that point they're performing. Now a sort of slightly smaller version of this process happens whenever anybody new joins the group um, and so you know because that person then has to fit in or um, and, and or be accommodated or whatever. Uh, so these processes are happening all the time it's a constant process of negotiation. Um, so when you have that convergence of ideas, um, what you want to do is be aware that at this point an in-group, out-group dynamic is going to form. So the in-group is all the people who agree with the, the goals and the ideas of the group and the values of the group, um, and the out-group is people who don't. Um, what we want to be careful of is, I mean, it's inevitable that an in-group, out-group is going to form, right? Because you have a group and then there's a cohesiveness and a friendliness to the group. So they're obviously going to form an in-group thing. What is dangerous is when people project their shadow onto the out-group. So, um, and then the out-group becomes demonised because that's when you get persecutions, right? Um, it's especially difficult if the members of the group project their shadow onto another member of the group who's not in the clique, in the in the in group. Um, that can be really dangerous and disruptive, and it's definitely something you want to avoid. Uh, and that is one of the reasons why covens, which become incredibly close, are very have a big big deal vetting process for new members, right? Um, so another thing you've got to watch out for is um, a syndrome that's called the somebody has to do it syndrome. And what that is, is where um, nobody really wants to write the rituals or facilitate the ritual or, um, you know, plan for activities or whatever it happens to be um, so the buck falls on or the buck stops with usually the high priestess who then has to go all oh, right I will write the ritual um, or I will produce a ritual from my store of rituals um, this can be a sad thing really because it's really good if uh, you know as a high priestess I really want people to write rituals um, because I want to experience other people's ideas and other people's rituals. It's nice having people perform my stuff, but I also want people to, um, I want to be able to perform in other people's stuff and I want to see their ideas and experience their thoughts and values and what have you. Um, so, and also somebody has to do it syndrome can also lead to burnout on the part of the, the person who is the the somebody on whom doing it falls so I think this one's the one to watch out for and the way I try to overcome that is to get people to do little bits of ritual first so like you know hey write a quarter call or write a visualization or something and then work your way up to writing a full ritual so um, now the other thing that's an interesting one is a lot of people who are very egalitarian want to have a sort of, you know, they want to have consensus and that's great. You know, consensus is a really good thing if you can get it right. Um, there are whole books about learning how to do consensus process, which I would certainly recommend people have a look at. Um, but what I think you need is for the locus of power to be visible because if you have somebody who is the arbiter of decisions or the person the buck stops with or the, you know, somebody who says, right, okay, 
this is the intention, who wants to join me in my intention. Um, if you don't have that, then I think the, the locus of power gravitates to the person with the loudest voice or the most curmudgeonly person who wants to veto everything. <laughs> so, um, I mean, obviously the, it's the responsibility of the person who is the designated leader to make sure that power is shared and that everybody gets um, a fair shout out and that, that everybody gets heard and encourage people and empower other people to, uh, to create ritual or to take part. And that model is known as servant leadership. So, you know, the group doesn't exist to gratify the whims or the needs of the leader. The group exists to empower and create meaning and joy and companionship for everybody in the group. So it's really important that the leader has that as their core value and make sure that everybody in the group is growing and be feeling empowered and able to contribute and encouraged to develop their spiritual life. Um, and so th there's a lot to think about when you're running a group. Now, my first thing is always to create a safe space because I think safe space is really important. You know, I want people to feel safe because you can't be empowered unless you feel safe. And so a big part of of creating rituals is to create a safe safe environment where people can explore and be creative um, and that way hopefully you might you know you're never going to get away with with not experience you know you're always going to experience some of these issues in a group it's it's like something that happens and you can't get away from it so forewarned is forearmed um, but you can head off a lot of the issues at the pass by creating that safe environment and also vetting people who come along who might be disruptive in that environment because um, obviously we want to be we want to include as many people as possible but sometimes there are some people who are just very disruptive in groups and unfortunately they are not a good fit for a coven and maybe they'll be a better fit in somebody else's coven but you know there are so many people who are terrified of joining a coven because they've heard all the horror stories and I think you know we need to make sure we create that safe space where people feel welcomed and empowered anyway I think that's all I've got to say on the subject of group dynamics I uh, hope it was helpful um, please subscribe to my youtube channel and check out my blog dowsing for divinity and check out my books um, and uh, you can find links to those on my profile right blessed be have a nice day